Hi everybody, it's Richard here and welcome to another video. Uh, this is my response to Pre Pretty Green Vinyl Guy Edwin who asked us to show 10 albums with uh, great uh, closing tracks. Now I've just finished watching uh, Chris at the Vinyl Orchard and he made a really valid point saying is it a great closing track or is it a great track that closes the album? They're two different things. So a, a great closing track is something that you just couldn't feature anywhere else on the album but there and um, a great track that closes the album could actually feature throughout you know in any other place on the album so um, it's going to be a, a little bit of a mixture of both here for me so I'm going to start with this which is a great closing track and couldn't be anywhere else in the album and this is uh, from David Bowie's Diamond Dogs my favorite album of all time I've said that for about the 75th million time on these videos and it's Chant of the Ever Circling Skeletal Family it's an instrumental piece with a bit of chant in it, chanting in it and it's very very hypnotic it comes at the end of Big Brother so really it's Big Brother and the chant together as one song and to justify that if you look at David Live it's actually credited to just Big Brother but in saying that we'll just say it's the chant um, it only goes on for a couple of minutes and there's almost an echoey um, end to it where it goes rat 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 continuous and it's almost like a throb it's like a throb to your tooth if you have a really sore tooth and you hear that back, oh sore 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 it's the way I think about it I think it's brilliant it's very hypnotic and as I say, a brilliant end to a brilliant album. Next up, and I'm going to go for The Stones, and this is Goatshead's Soup album, and the song is Star Star, where they use the word star fucker. So, well, I call it star effer from now on. Okay, um, yeah, it's a, it starts off with a, a Chuck Berry intro. Uh, why does Chuck Berry have always the same intro for every single song he's done? But um, it's a really, really good song with a really catchy chorus. And the, the part of this I really like is the end because they're riffing away. And it's as if Mick Jagger is howling to the moon at the very end. It's, it's, it's magnificent. It really is. And it's, again, my favourite Stones album. And it's a brilliant way to finish off this album from 1973. Third one, and I'm going to give it to... Um, Afterglow by Genesis and this is from Wind and Mothering and this is their second album from 1976 um, again this segues in from In That Quiet Earth but this is a magnificent vocal performance and it's almost like a big climax to the album it is wonderful um, I think this should have actually been released as a single it would have done so well I think it was on some of the compilation albums but Afterglow and it was performed brilliantly on the second side album as well this is a really good song but it's also a really good closing song so that gets my number three number four and I'm going to give it to the jam in down in the tube station at midnight now I didn't really want to pick singles here because singles are generally regarded as good songs but this is different in a way because the ending of this stops with a halt and uh, then you hear a train starting and Weller starts riffing away and then this train gets louder and then fades out as it goes into the distance I think it's a brilliant way to end the album the single version itself does not have that it's just the chorus continued and then faded out so um, the single version wouldn't work as well on this album the LP version works brilliantly so down the tube station at midnight by the jam Number five, I'm going to give it to a live album. I don't know if you're allowed them, but I'm going to give it to Bob Dylan at Budokan. And the song is The Times They Are A-Changing. And this is riddled with a saxophone. A lot of people don't like this album. Um, there's so many different versions of the songs, but he does them really well. Like Sometimes when he changes a song, he makes a complete and utter hash of it. But these ones are really good and times they are changing is a highlight for me. And again, especially at the very end, whenever he says his, his good nights, the uh, saxophone carries on and it's a wonderful, wonderful tune that it's playing. 
and it's it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Sax solos through this, and you would never think that if you listened to the 1964 original. But um, this is a highlight for the album for me, and I think it's brilliant. Number six, and um, I'm going to give it to a song called Lily White by Cat Stevens from his Mona Bone Jackin album. And this is a really, really strong album. There's a lot of guitar picking and so forth. But Lily White is a very simple strum where I think he's just winding down and he sings a beautiful melodic song and he lets the orchestra do all the hard work. So he's just uh, strumming away, singing a nice song and there's a beautiful orchestra uh, in the background and then once he finishes the orchestra carries on for a bit and it's the end of the album and it's a perfect end to a really really strong album. Number seven, and I'm going to give it to um, a song called Like an Angel Passing Through My Room from uh, ABBA, the Visitors album in 1981. It's a glorious song with uh, Frida uh, in absolutely gorgeous voice. It's very, very sparse. It starts with a clock ticking, it ends with a clock ticking, and it's so atmospheric, you know. If you think about it, the, the actual title, like an angel passing through my room, is gorgeous. Even though if an angel was ap actually going to pass through your room, you would probably crap yourself. But the, the whole image is beautiful and it's beautifully sung and it ends again, I think, their best album. Number eight, and I'm going to give it to, from News of the World, uh, My Melancholy Blues which ends this album as a really strong album and after it's late Freddie just uh, tones everything down and does the most beautiful piano blues song and his vocals are amazing in this it's one of his best songs ever I know I do harp on about this song as well but I absolutely love it so my melancholy blues is my eighth choice Ninth choice and um, from Elton John's Caribou it's ticking and um, it's just Elton on the piano. There's a little bit of synthesizer in here but it's only for effect. But this is a very disturbing song. It's about a young boy, a very quiet young boy, grows up and then kills in a bar and he, the police are called. He comes out of the bar with his hands up and he's bullet holes are shot through them. It's very disturbing but it's a really really good song and this is one that you could not end or sorry you couldn't follow a song after this. This has to come at the end and it's a little bit like a day in the life as well you know whenever the end happens um, there's a little fade out that lasts nearly a minute. It's almost like you know a shock so you're just sitting there going oh my god what have I heard uh, it does, the needle doesn't lift, it carries on a very, very, very low noise and it's absolutely brilliant. And again, this is one of his best albums. Not his best, but it's not far away. And number 10 is another shocking one and it's from Lou Reed. Oops, and it's a sad song. And side two of this is amazing. This is another very, very dark album. And this is a, like a song of regret and it's an excellent way to uh, end the album. Um, there's not an awful lot of lyrics in this but the orchestration is magnificent and I absolutely love it. Some of the lyrics are actually uh, quite brutal as well. I could have broken both of her arms. Well, it's not a very nice thing to say but very effective song and that gets my number 10. Now number 11, um, there's only supposed to be 10 but I'm going to add one in and this is a song that's absolutely brilliant. It's the best song on the album but it's the last song but it's not the last song you don't know it was there until you played the album it's one of those hidden tracks and it's from green rem and it's officially known as untitled and the, the i think the um the california one was the one that's actually technically the last song you think ah, that's good and then you're about to get up to change the album and you hear doom 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 i go oh hidden song great and it turns out to be the best song on the whole LP and it's dual vocals and I love dual vocal songs um, with Michael Stipe and I think it's Mick Mills an absolutely brilliant 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 song and it's one of my favourite all time REM songs never mind just my favourite off the LP so this is getting a mention as well 
So that's 10 plus 1 of uh, great closing tracks. Um, other people should jump on this as well because I've watched about 2 or 3 and they've been excellent. So that's me for now and I hope to have another video quite soon. All the best now. Bye bye.